Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to introduce Noistar. So Noistar is a project which builds upon an already existing family of protocols called Noise, which defines a simple DSL for key exchange or contract protocols. So for instance, here we have a list of six what we call protocol patterns, which describe protocol for various use cases. For instance, for wineware encryption, this is very similar to Knucklebox or HPKE, for connection to an authenticated server, or for mutual authentication. The commonality between all the protocols in this family is that they are built upon Diffie-Hellman's key derivation and pre-shared keys. And for instance, they don't use signatures or chems. For now, it gives a family of 59 protocols, but if more features are added, it, this number might increase. Another interesting thing is that those protocols are already used in quite popular applications like WhatsApp or the WireGuard VPN. Now, let's have a look at one of those protocol patterns in particular. I added a few annotations to make things more explicit, but it gives something like this. A protocol pattern describes how to exchange messages to set up a connection between an initiator on the left and a responder on the right. It starts with a pre-message phase, which has to be done once. And for instance, here it says that before starting any handshake, the initiator must know the responder's public static key. If it is the case, the initiator can start as many handshakes as he wants with the responder. Then comes the handshake phase, during which both parties exchange messages. And finally, we enter the transport phase, during which it is possible to exchange an arbitrary number of messages, in this case, both ways. If we look in details at the handshake messages, we see they are made by a list of tokens. Those tokens, oh, those tokens describe how to, for instance, exchange key material. Here, the E token means send an ephemeral, study, an ephemeral key, and the S token send a static key. They explain how to derive and change shared secrets from those key material. For example, ES means perform the Diffie-Hellman between the initiator's ephemeral key and the responder's static key. And finally, they explain how to, at which point it is possible to send and receive encrypted data. Interestingly, it is possible to send data during the handshake phase that is to say, before we enter the transport phase and have the full security guarantees, this is called early data and it is similar to TLS zero round trip data. Now, the noise protocol already has many implementations in various languages. The problem is that those implementations, they, there, has, there is a lot of bugs which have been found historically in protocol implementations, for example, in TLS. And there is a way of handling that, which is to use tools to formally verify this code, to, to analyze it, and, and make sure with a high level of confidence that it doesn't contain any bugs. And in this the case here, none of those implementations is verified. So such tools have been used to verify several implementations of protocols, like MTLS or SignalStar. And the question in the case of noise is, is it possible to verify 51, 59 protocols at once? And this is the goal of the Noistar project, to provide verified implementations of those protocols. Now, more precisely, Noistar is made of three components. First, we have a compiler from noise protocol patterns, which describe the various protocols, down to verified specialized C implementations. Because protocol code is quite low level, we complement this we have a very complete verified library stack, which we expose through a high-level defensive API. All this gives us code which is proven to be memory safe, type safe, and functionally correct. But this is not enough to, to have secure protocols. We also need formal security guarantees, which is why we complement this with a formal security analysis. Now, let's dive into those different components starting with the noise protocol compiler. So the first thing is, how do we write verified code? We use a very specific tool chain in our case. So we use a theorem prover, in our case FSTAR, which gives us a general purpose functional programming language aimed at program verification. With a theorem prover, you can 
write code, write theorem statements, and prove that the theorems are correct. And also, FSTAR gives us an effectful subset called LOSTAR by which we can write verified C-like code. And once we've written such code, we can use the Caramel framework to compile it down to C code to use it in other projects. Now, this toolchain has been successfully used in several projects, including the Everest project, whose goal is to provide verified components for the HTTPS ecosystem. And those components include verified cryptographic primitives, for example, Hacklestar, Velcrypt, and Evercrypt, verified parsers and for serializers, and also, as I've mentioned before, verified protocols like MTLS, SignalStar, and Quick. Now, how do we do this more specifically? We first start by writing what we call a formal specification, in our case, of the noise protocol. What we do more precisely is we have a look at the official reference for noise, which is plain text English on the left, and we carefully encode it in a pure high-level language given by FSTAR. The idea is that we want to write, to formalize this specification, the reference, into clean and auditable code which focuses on the functional behavior of noise without dealing with low-level error-prone details like buffers, pointers, aliasing, etc. Something else interesting here is that this high-level specification is written as an interpreter. For instance, if you write a function which processes a message, like send message tokens, it takes as input a list of tokens to describe the message and processes each token individually. Now, we have, now that we have a high-level spec, how do we write verified C code? For this, we use LOSTAR, which gives us access to low-level features like buffers and pointers. In LOSTAR, when we write a function signature, we can write a precondition, which states what needs to be verified upon calling the function. For example, those buffers are disjoint, uh, those pointers are non dangling pointers. Then we, have, we can write a parse condition, which explains in a high level how the function behaves. For instance, which buffers are modified. And we also use it to state functional correctness properties by linking the low-level code to the high-level specification we introduced earlier. And finally, when we write the body and type check it, FSTAR generates proof obligations, which are sent to the Z3 SMT server, which then says, yes, everything is fine, or no, please update your code. Once we have verified code, we use the Caramel framework to compile into C code and get something like this, which can, we can reuse in other projects. Now, as I've mentioned before, it is, LOSA has been used to verify a lot of cryptographic code, including whole protocols. So it is not a surprise that we can use it to implement one verified protocol. The question is, how can we write 59 at once? So I mentioned before that the high-level spec we, we use is written as an interpreter. So it is actually possible to write a verified interpreter in LOSTAR for noise. And for instance, the LOSA equivalent of the high-level function I showed before, send message tokens, is like this. I can need it a bit, of course. Now, the problem is that the low-level code, the target code we want, is like that. Yes. So this comes from the WireGuard VPN implementation. And if you look at it, you see that it, it is specialized idiomatic C code with no recursion, no list of tokens. Well, on the left, we have an interpreter which is written in a recursive style over a list of tokens. So now the question is, how can we turn this interpreter into more specialized code? And in other words, how can we turn this interpreter into a compiler by specializing it into on some given input? And there is actually a very simple way of doing this, which is called partial evaluation. So for instance, if you, take, if you want a function to implement a function which processes the first message of IKPSC2, so EESSSS, as an initiator, you can just implement it in it by calling the generic interpreter function send message tokens with the proper inputs. In this case, the, the list of tokens EESSSS. Now, the thing is, you can take the send message tokens function and inline its body, basically, and it gives this. And what you see here is that we have a match over a list of tokens that we can already evaluate, that is to say, at compile time. If we do so, 
we get something like this. And you see, for instance, that the e-token has been inserted in some places, and we have later a recursive call over the remaining list of tokens. And we can continue like that. For instance, we can evaluate this. It gives a constant. And then we can inline the constant. And step by step, it gives us, by unfolding things, evaluating matches, etc., it gives us a more and more specialized version of the function, in this case for the list of tokens in which we're interested. Now, this is a very simple idea, but partial evaluation combined with STAR's extremely powerful type system, which includes dependent types, gives us a way of generating extremely specialized code with no recursion, no list of tokens, but also an extremely precise control flow and very specialized types. That is to say, we have a way of writing a very generic implementation and then specialize it uh, with the compromise. So the whole idea is to use F star as a, to meet our program as much as possible. It is very similar to using super advanced C++ templates by which we write a meta program once and then specialize it in times. And this technique of turning an interpreter into a compiler is actually called a Futamura projection. Now, this technique of partial reduction has been used a lot in F star, for example, to get um, agile cryptographic primitives in Evercrypt to have functions which use vector types in Hakalik stem. And the thing is, stepping away from the problem of verifying programs, it is actually a very useful technique just to factorize cryptographic code, for instance, by writing one very generic MD hash function and specializing it to SHA-1, SHA-2, or MD5, or writing at once generic and optimized implementations for cryptographic primitives. And what we do with Noistar is that we push this technique to the point where we can have a complete metaprogram protocol stack. Now, this gives us um, protocol code which is proven to be type and memory safe and also functionally correct. But as I've said before, this is not enough for protocols. We also want security guarantees, which is why we did a security analysis. In our case, the noise reference defines authentication and confidentiality levels for all the messages in a hundred pattern. So what we did is we formalized the security levels as uh, security codes in a framework called Dolaviosta, which is a framework for symbolic analysis. And we did one generic symbolic analysis proof by working at the level of the interpreter specification. So all this gives us verified protocol code but this is very low level, so we complemented it with a high level defensive API. This API is very useful because, um, for instance, if you look at IKPSK2, you can see there are so a lot, quite a few low level transitions. And such transitions led to a lot of bugs, for instance, in TLS. For this reason, we implemented verified state machines, which are also generically metaprogrammed so that we can abstract away from the handshake phase and the transpose port phase. Also, it is, as I've mentioned before, it is possible to send messages early uh, before we reach the transport phase, but a user might inadvertently send messages without having the proper security guarantees. For this reason, we implemented a misuse resistant API that reflects the security guarantees, performs dynamic checks to make sure we don't send messages too early, and we also propagated the security proofs in the API. Finally, in one handshake, we manipulate a lot of keys, in particular static keys. And for this reason, we implemented utilities for key and peer management, for example, to validate remote keys, load and store static keys, look up pre-shared keys upon knowing, learning a remote identity, and also to securely store keys on the disk. Something important here is that in most implementations, the high-level API is the biggest component in terms of size. And in the case of Noistar, it accounts for more than three quarters of the lines of the generated code. With our implementation, we, we use our implementation to generate code for the 59 noise patterns. And actually, for every pattern, we used eight different cipher suits, leading to 472 instantiations. We benchmark those against existing implementations. And thanks to the very good performance of the hackless star primitives we use under the hood, our, our implementation is very performant. In particular, it beats everything at the exception of WireGuard, which is specialized for IKPSK2. 
As a conclusion, I introduced Noista, which is its all things, a compiler from noise protocol patterns to efficient verified C code, but also a complete verified stack exposed for high level defensive API, all of these being completed by a symbolic analysis. Stepping aside from the verification of cryptographic protocols, now it starts showcases techniques which are useful to verify full software stacks and also automate the production of code where we don't sacrifice precision nor performance. All the code is available on GitHub. If you only want the C code, you can pick it up. And if you need a specific choice of optimized primitives, you can contact us and we'll be very happy to provide the proper instantiation for you. Thanks for your attention and you have questions. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you very much for the great talk. This is a great job on building such a versatile framework for uh, verifying so many different things. That's really, really cool. Um, if we have any questions, oh yes, you have a question, please. Hello, Master Fonny of MBI. Thank you for a great talk, and uh, I do have a question. And uh, if I understand correctly, the um, uh, low star uh, security protocols and proofs go to the C level. So you have proofs from type level to C level. Do you have a story about uh, how the C memory model and especially after that C compilers might um, change security properties or how do you prove those? Okay, so um, okay, we have a model of C which gives us that the compilation from no start to C is correct, um, I mean, functionally correct. Now we don't, for instance, we don't model the memory in such a way that, for instance, this is all functional correctness, mostly. And also we have some constant time guarantees uh, by making sure we don't use some operations like division. Uh, now we don't have guarantees like, um, we don't prove that um, we zero the memory before release. We do it by hand, we would the code, but we can't prove these sort of things. Okay, thank you. So, uh, any other questions? Let's see, there's no question online. Okay, I, I had one question. Uh, which was basically, so one of the things you mentioned, especially in your paper in the talk is, uh, you know, you can add more protocols to the system. It's built to be a framework. So could you maybe comment on how complex that is and how much effort that would take? Okay, so with regards, if we need to add more uh, components with regards to, if the DSL is bigger, um, at the protocol la layer, it's not that much of a big deal because, for instance, we have this, if you want to send a message, we have a send message tokens function, which just recursively calls a generic send message token function, which just does a match. It's very easy to add new cases there. It becomes a bit more complex if we need to handle more keys at the API level. We would have a lot more work to do here. Um, but for protocol, it's pretty simple. Now, another thing which would require a bit of thinking is how we update the security proof, because the invariants are quite subtle to state in that place. Sounds good. Thank you for your answer. Um, any other question? Doesn't seem to be. Okay. Um, me, I had like one last uh, question. So I, I, I think I'm a little bit familiar with the ProVerif framework, which is also from Enria. Uh, and I also use this, uh, the symbolic analysis with py. So could you maybe comment on contrast the two frameworks? Yes, um, so I'm not an expert of ProVerif. I think the ProVerif model might be more precise than the one we use in the Levio star. The converter part is that from my understanding you can't, um, you wouldn't be able to analyze several, several protocols at once. So here, and it's more automated, ProVerif is more automated. Um, we have more manual work to do on the Levio star. The converter part is that we can write very things very generically, uh, consider recursive functions, for instance, which allows us to factorize the proof. Or with ProVerif, I think you would have to do 
um, a proof about one protocol at a time. Sounds great. Thank you so much for all the answers. Let's uh, give our presenter another round of applause. Thank you very much.